Uh, I've come here to Usk Reservoir today, which is a beautiful little place. And behind me there is this gorgeous view um, of the reservoir itself. And then there's some trees back there. And then you can see the mountains. Uh, we're in, basically, we're in the Brecon Beacons. We're on the edge of the Brecon Beacons. Uh, and you can see so many things there. It's about, it's coming up to six o'clock. Golden hour is in about half an hour's time, so I'm going to be trying to find a shot here, setting up an upper shot uh, that I think is going to be um, pretty spectacular. Anyway, there are two options that I've got. There's one looking directly towards the sun, which of course, as it's setting, is going to be probably more dramatic. Uh, but then there's one, there's one looking towards the mountain, which I think actually might be uh, the better shot. But right now, I've got to go find a way of getting down onto the little beachy bit um, without falling over. So anyway, I've found what I think is a shot and I framed it up. Um, this one has been quite simple because there's a specific shot that I wanted to get with this mountain in the background. Now, the sun is setting in a place that I wasn't expecting it to set, so uh, I might have to do a second exposure pointing over that way. Uh, I can set that up actually once golden hour is sort of starting when the sun is low enough. I've had to put an ND filter on this anyway to get the, the sort of the smoothness of the water that I wanted to get because I want to do what is actually quite a long exposure. Um, so anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's all set up. We're kind of ready to go. Now it's kind of just a case of sitting around uh, and waiting for the sun to be in the right place. Now, today I've come out to uh, this place, Usk Reservoir, and it kind of goes along with something that I've been saying on these videos for quite some time. Uh, that if you want to actually go out and do photography, you've got to kind of go out and do photography. It's no good just saying, oh, well, you know, I'd like to give it a go, but I don't live in the right place or I don't, you know, you make those opportunities for yourself. Uh, and this is me making an opportunity for myself. I've driven uh, about three hours today uh, just to get here. Um, I've got to drive another three hours back and of course that's going to be in the dark but it's all right because what I'll have at the end of it hopefully is a really nice photo that I can that I, I'll be pleased with um, and mostly when you're talking about landscapes and things it's really just a case of waiting and no you can't always get the sun uh, right at that point uh, where where it's it's uh, sinking where you've got these beautiful skies and everything but you can get something and that's what I'm hoping to get tonight is just this this shot that's going to be a, a really nice uh, smooth water. I mean, it won't be smooth, but it'll be smoother water uh, with this lovely mountain in the background. There's another 20 or so minutes to go until we actually really get that golden hour light. And what I've decided to do is try this as a panorama. Now, I don't know if that's going to work. So I'm going to take one exposure uh, as my, with with the sort of framing that I'd want for a single image thing. And then I'm going to try a panorama uh, going uh, from this one end uh, over here, which I know you can't see, right to this other end over here. And what it should mean is that I get those reflections in the water in the best possible way. Um, I've upped it to two seconds. Now, I'll, I'll just flick the uh, screen on and let's just see. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this at all. There's the camera. Now, you see, when I try and show you the camera, you just you just can't you just can't see that because it's uh it's too it's too reflective uh never mind you'll see it when we actually finish the shot um but what i've got essentially if i flip this camera around what i'm after is a panorama it's from there ish all the way over to to there so you see this you've got this mountain in the middle but you see this uh, sort of reflection in the water that's the kind of uh, look uh, that I want to get and I want to get it wider than uh, than just the reflection um, it actually reminds me of uh, a waveform if you've ever edited video it actually to me it looks uh, like an audio waveform which I thought was was, was quite nice um, anyway I'm just I'm literally just sitting around here waiting for the sun to go down and you know what it's not bad life really is it I keep seeing little um, drops in the water and I don't know if it's fish or if it's birds I'm seeing a lot of birds along this this coastline tiny little things um, that seem to be foraging uh, amongst the uh, amongst the uh, rocks at the bottom of the of the reservoir so there's a lot of wildlife around here it's quite 
it's quite pleasant just sitting you know watching the whole thing uh, you, there's, there's, you could say not a care in the world um, but uh, I am sat on rock and uh, it is starting to um, to drive into my bottom an odd thing to talk about I suppose whilst I'm sat here waiting but I've been seeing a lot of videos at the moment about why you should or shouldn't shoot in 4k and I'm sitting here recording actually in 4k at the moment in 4k24 kind of thinking to myself well why are there so many videos saying this when actually in reality a lot of those people are producing 4k videos and there are a lot of reasons why you can you know why you don't have to shoot in 4k chief amongst them most people won't actually watch it in 4k at all most people will uh, watch it on their phones and their phones are nowhere, nowhere close uh, to 4k a lot of them aren't actually 720p still although they, you know that's uh, uh, that's becoming rarer uh, as as time goes on what i think the real problem is for many people is actually it's storage it's um it's the processing of it because if you edit a 4k video that's incredibly difficult to edit and i'm speaking from experience if you don't have a machine that is capable of editing uh, 4k then that's a that's a real problem now all of this came to a head when I went away on holiday and I was pr planning on producing a, a holiday video, which is a, I did that uh, last year on, a, on, a, on another channel, on a gaming channel that I've got. And uh, I decided to, we'll just say, to hell with it, let's shoot in 4K. And I got this little camera, this DJI Osmo, and uh, it would do 4K straight out of the box. So I thought, OK, let's do this straight out of the box. And I shot in 4K and got it back to my room using an old uh, MacBook, 2012 MacBook, so you've got no graphics processing in it you've got you know it's a very bog standard in many cases uh computer uh and yet it's an apple mac so you have to you have to take that into account as well and um put the files into the computer generated proxy files from them and i was able to edit that video down straight away and as it turns out I didn't actually finish editing that uh, the, the, those holiday uh, videos, mostly because I didn't take enough video. I spent so long taking photos that I kind of forgot to take video with it. And it wasn't like this. It wasn't that I was sat around waiting for a photo to happen and I had a bit of time to talk to a camera. Anyway, I digress. The reason that I'm bringing this up is because uh, something very important is happening on YouTube at the moment. And if you're wanting to compete on YouTube, and let's face it, if you're putting videos onto YouTube anyway, you're kind of wanting to compete, even if you don't want to do it officially, then it's no good producing videos that are in 1080p because you get a boost, not a massive one, but you get a bit of a boost for producing 4K videos. So with that in mind, it, it throws the question of whether or not you should film in 4k into a completely different light i do because i've got access to the tools where i can do it i've got a camera that shoots in 4k i've got this that shoots in 4k i've got my iphone that's a 4k video as well but if you haven't got those facilities 1080p which is pretty ubiquitous at the moment means it's all over the place uh, in fact 1080p is all over the place um it is perfectly fine and what you can do instead of um of filming in in 4k you can film in 1080 upscale to 4k produce it at 4k and you still get that same effect but for me i don't know what it is if you're if you've got a modern mobile phone it will film in 4k anyway and I don't know what it is about that. The whole idea about producing something and filming in, uh, in 4K as you go, I think it's a really smart idea. And it means that, you know, the quality that you get out of it is going to be a little bit better. And actually that does matter when you put it onto YouTube because YouTube compresses everything down. Um, and really, I suppose... The, the the big thing to bring put to pull out of that is that you need to have the right export settings in Adobe Premiere. Now look, if you're interested in what my export settings for Adobe Premiere are, because I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the best ones are, let me know. Put a link in the uh, put a, a comment down below, and uh, I will make that video. I will tell you what I'm using to do it. Um, you might not be interested, you know. <laughs> I don't know. You're the the the, uh, the audience. I want to know what you think on things like this. Now, 
again, what I'm saying here, my personal preference is to shoot in 4K because I quite like it. I like the fact that I'm shooting in 4K more than anything else. But some of the shots that I've taken that, I've, that have been in my videos have been shot in 1080p and upscaled. And what I'd be interested in knowing is, can anybody tell which ones? Anyway, it's just a thought. But as I'm sat here doing absolutely nothing for... God, the sun's just blinded me. For uh, probably another about 10, 15 minutes, I would expect. Um, I, it's just something that was, uh, that brought in... That I that fell into my mind. That's not the right word. I can't think. It's, it's nature in front of me. My mind's gone all crazy. Anyway, do let me know what you think in the comments below. I think it's, a, it's a, an important uh, uh, discussion to be had, which we haven't really talked about before. But I have seen, uh, you know, big YouTubers saying, oh, you shouldn't shoot in 4K. I've seen uh, business YouTubers saying, oh, well, you must shoot in 4K because algorithm. I've seen other photography YouTubers say, you don't need to shoot in 4K. You can upscale. And look, here's some examples. I don't know. I'm doing what I think is, is right based on what I think I want to produce. What do you want? What what would you what would be your reasons for either shooting in 4K or not shooting in 4K or upscaling whatever it is that you want to do? For me, to some extent, it future proofs what I'm doing, but only to a small extent. And I don't know how relevant that's actually going to be in the future. Well, it's just gone seven o'clock, um, and I thought we'd get some cloud today. Uh, earlier when I was here, actually, there was some cloud up, up that way, and I thought that would the, the sun. I'm just about to see. Yeah, I thought the sun would hit that, but it's not going to happen, I don't think. So I'm going to try and get an exposure right now. We are technically in uh, what golden hour uh, uh, would be. Uh, so if I turn the camera on now, now I framed this shot up. I'm just going to focus it again. Uh, it is all kind of where I want it. I'm just going to uh, manipulate the camera a, a little bit. Not easy to do because something is crawling on my face. Uh, it's not pleasant. Uh, there we go. That's it. Uh, and it's a, it's an interesting shot. I think it's going to work quite well. Uh, I'm doing this at two seconds. Uh, F14. Uh, we're at ISO 50 which is low as this camera can go. And I love some of the, the effects I've been able to get on, on this. Uh, I've got an 8-stop ND filter. Uh, it's, what, 400 ND. I don't know. I, I think that's an 8-stop filter. Uh, it's a variable filter, so I could alter it if I need to. And I'm just going to take uh, uh, a bracketed exposures now and see how we get on. So to do that, because I need two hands, uh, I turn my brackets on. We're going to get three exposures on here because I've, you know what? I've tried five exposures on some things and as yet, I've not needed them. Uh, now, I'm also going to just zoom into here. I know you can't actually see this happening, but it is worth, worth looking at. Now, I know a lot of people would say, well, you need to focus manually. I can't do that yet. Uh, I actually have bought... Uh, and it's sitting at home waiting for me. It got delivered today, uh, a field monitor, so that I could actually put that field monitor on the camera and see this properly. Because the one problem with this camera, which is brilliant, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, I really do think it's very, 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 blah, 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 very good, um, is that it doesn't quite work the way that I was expecting it to, the, the, the live view and everything. Okay, so I'm going to do a... A shot like this. I've turned it to infinity. And hopefully this is going to work. So we'll take these three shots now. Uh, obviously, now I'm, I'm completely on manual for this. So I've chosen the everything myself. Uh, as much as possible, I, li I like to put it in something uh, like uh, semi-auto, you know, uh, either aperture or, or um, uh, what's it called? The other one. Um, shutter speed. There we go. I swear my mind is going. Uh, now, now that's taken three images, which were kind of pointless. Right, okay. Uh, so, take it out of bracketing. It's important that you do this. Take it out of bracketing. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to take a single exposure. 
It takes a single exposure at two seconds, uh, which is is black because I have my hand in front of the camera. That's that's important. And I'm actually going to bring this up because clearly uh, I need uh, I need some more time in there. I don't want to do five seconds, but I might do four and see where it goes. Um, obviously, every minute that goes by now, uh, this is getting darker and darker and darker. Now, I'm going to put this on uh, a bracket of five. Like I said, it hasn't been useful in the past, uh, but what I'm hoping is here, uh, if I turn this on to timer and press the button, what I'm hoping is that uh, with five exposures, if I get the first two wrong, the last two will pick up for, will make up for it. We'll see how that goes. Very long. Okay, but the sun is going down over there, so I've got very little time to actually take these. Uh, this needs to be, I'm going to take bracketing off. There's a reason I'm doing this. Uh, I'm taking bracketing off. Uh, focusing is where focusing does. I'm going to put the focus thing up there. It should be able to focus on that. Come on, there we go. All right, we're going to do a single shot, four seconds, and see what that looks like. And I'm going to have to do a, a couple of those because the sun is really going down now. But uh, good thing about RAW, should be able to pull some of it, some stuff out of it. Okay. All right. Uh, another one. Only... 10 second exposure. I, I haven't done a 10 second exposure before. Um, at least not not that I know of anyway. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure how this is going to turn out. Just have to kind of leave it there to see what happens. There's some gorgeous colours in this lake here. Uh, now, I'm, And then I'm going to have to put the camera down because I want to do a panorama. Uh, uh, and that's it. That is it. And that looks sharp in the foreground. I can't really tell. It looks sharp in the foreground. It looks sharp in, in the other one. So, so we're going to leave it at 10 seconds. I'm going to turn this camera off now and I'm going to do my panorama because I'm going to need two hands for that. Clearly I was panicking a little about losing the light, but as it turns out I shouldn't have worried. I think at some point I forgot there was an ND filter on the front of the camera. This is the first image I took and actually I'm pretty pleased with it. I, I got that reflection that I was after, even though there's still some movement on the water. But for me, the panorama was really the thing that I wanted to try. And here is that panorama shot. It was always going to be difficult to get a coastline like this because it's quite a wide coastline. and You can see that sort of bend in the image where uh, you get the, the panning of the, of the camera. But actually, I think what I got as a final image is actually quite pleasing. I, I'm pretty pleased with it. Perhaps I should have zoomed in a little bit more and not had quite so much foreground, but I like it. I was also very fortuitous that a fisherman happened to come along just when I was taking the shot. I really do think that he adds something. But as I was about to come away, I took one more exposure, and it's the shot that I'm happiest with from this trip. This is it, a portrait shot of the mountain. And I'm really pleased with the way that the trees frame this image and the way that the peak catches that falling sunlight. And all in all, you know, this was a really great trip, a really little, excellent little photo location. And if you've enjoyed taking that trip with me, then please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon as well. Well, that's it for today's video anyway. And I will see you next time, hopefully for some more photo vlogging. Until then, goodbye.